Larry Brown is back. Isn't that an interesting <laughs> wave he's got going there? Always yes, coming up yeah. with something new on the fifth Supportive corner. wave. So you are singer, songwriter, storyteller, and best kids corner waver, oh, Larry Brown. How thank are you. you. Good morning, everyone. So Paul was not telling a lie, a little laryngitis there. I don't know. Yesterday my voice started to fade away. So I was going to sing today, but I'll just have to talk. Okay. But you can still do a story then. Well, sure. And this obviously won't hamper what you've got coming up later this month on December the 12th. I'll be, yes, I'll be at the Adult Day Connection, right? Yeah. Is that where I'll be on the 12th? <laughs> yes. I'm his manager now. Adult Day Connection on Wednesday, December the 12th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You're doing your traditional Christmas... Yeah, tell stories about the origin of a number of uh, popular Christmas carols. And sing a little bit of them. We're going to do something on the show on that too, aren't we? Well, let's do that, yeah. Yeah, let's talk about Next time Christmas we're... carol traditions. Okay. I'm sure you could teach us a lot. But if you would like to contact Larry for yourself, 573-642-9326, or you can email him at uh, brownstory Brown story at uh, hotmail.com. Hotmail, hotmail.com. Or go to his website, brownstory.com, and you can contact him that way, too. Mm. And your CDs are available at Walters Boone County Historical Society. And at Sassafras Moon World Gifts in Hallsville. In Hallsville. Okay, so today's story is a holiday story. Yes. yes. And it's called? Jake Miller's Christmas. Okay. Jake was pretty much of a hermit. He lived up on his mountain his whole life. In fact, he lived in the very same house that his folks had built. He had everything he needed up there. He had some livestock, a garden. He hunted when he needed to. But the thing he hated most was as he watched that city come creeping up toward his mountain. Particularly at night, he would look down and see the lights of that city as if an octopus was just reaching up and trying to take away his place. He didn't have outside utilities. He didn't need them. He had a spring for water. He had candles for light at night if he needed it, and he heated by wood. But as he would watch that city move toward him beneath him in the valley, one day he decided, I'm going to take a look and see what's going on. Jake would go occasionally down to the crossroads to buy essentials like coffee and sugar and flour, but he'd never ventured into that city until that day. And he happened to come down at the time of Christmas shopping. It was an impressive, almost oppressive world for Jake as he walked among the traffic and the people in the bustles and he saw all of the houses and the shopping centers stretching out before him. All day he walked wearing down, weary from that incredible pressure and sound and, and people pushing and shoving cars. It was nighttime and he was headed back toward his mountain when he passed a little wood frame church that seemed to be tucked away in the suburbs as if it had never been affected by what was around it. He hesitated for a moment because he thought he recognized that church building and he heard the sounds of Christmas music coming. And to his surprise, he found himself going in, sitting on the back pew. And as he watched and listened, there was a little girl in the pew in front of him who turned around and looked over the pew at him and was kind of smiling. And Jake was feeling more comfortable. Well, when the service was ended, Jake intended to get out in a hurry, but he couldn't because the little girl ran up and hugged him around his legs and looked up at him. Well, the parents of the girl came up and introduced themselves. I'm Milt Harris, the man said. I see you've already met our daughter. Jake Miller, he said. Jake Miller, that's a familiar name. Well, I, I live up on the mountain. I don't come down here much. And Milt went on to tell him that I think I remember you because my father had taken me up to your place to hunt when I was a kid. Weren't you the young man that showed us around? And Jake began to remember. Indeed, he remembered how often his folks would bring people up to their mountain to enjoy what they had. Well, Milt said, we could take you home tonight if you'd like. And well, he accepted. And on that ride back up to the crossroads, they made arrangements to meet again. And sure enough, Jake came down from his mountain to share a wonderful meal with the Harris family. And later, they came up to enjoy a wonderful meal on Jake's mountain. Maybe Jake Miller wasn't so much of a hermit after all because of that Christmas. Hmm. What a nice candy tale. And Jake made a friend. Made friends. Made friends by just coming down. On Those them. city folk. <laughs> Larry Brown, thank you so much. Always good to have you on the Kids Corner. Thank Next you. time you're on, again, Christmas Carol Traditions. We'll do that. We'll talk about that. Until then, bye-bye. Be good. Behave. See ya.